In this lecture, we are going to learn how to perform Excel sheet manipulation with Python. We're going to use an Excel workbook that contains multiple sheets, which you can find in the source files for this section. We have sheet one and sheet two. This data comes from the UCI machine learning repository for the stock portfolio performance data set. This contains a data set of performances of weighted scoring stock portfolios obtained with mixture design from the US stock market historical database. I've also shortened this database and split it into two sheets for testing purposes. Here we have the attribute information about the data set. So we have the weight of the large BP concept, the weight of the large ROE concept, the weight of the large SP concept, the weight of the large return rate in the last quarter concept, the weight of the large market value concept, the weight of the small systematic risk concept, annual return, excess return, systematic risk, total risk, absolute win rate, and relative win rate. So those are the attributes present. This is a large data set, which I have just split up into two sheets and also just shortened the data set in general. So now that we have our data, join me at Google Colab. We're going to create a new Colab file and learn how we can manipulate this Excel sheet. I've included a link to the data and the source for the data. Note that first we have to upload our Excel file, which is called multiple sheets.xl sx into this Colab file. You will get a reminder that uploaded files will get deleted when the runtime is recycled because this is temporary storage. If you want permanent storage, you can use Google Drive. Great, now that we have uploaded our file, let's load it into our Colab project. So I am going to import the pandas library so that way we can take our file and convert it to the pandas data frame type. I'm going to create a variable data and use the pandas function read Excel to read our Excel file, which is called multiple sheets.xlsx. And we can also specify what sheet we want to read. By default, the first sheet is the one that will be imported. But if we want, we can mention a sheet name such as sheet two. Then we can paste out the value of our variable and we'll see that we will get the values for sheet two. If we go to sheet two, we can see that indeed they do match up with what we have loaded in here into our pandas data frame. We can also specify that we want to use a column from the sheet as the index column. Unless we specify what column we want as the index column, the index column gets added by default and it just counts off all the rows. But if we want to, we can set the index column to one of our columns, like, for example, zero. In which case, if I rerun the code cell, look at that, my first column now becomes my index column. We can also specify that we want to import a specific column instead of all of these columns. So I can create a new code cell. I'm going to, once again, use my same line that I did previously and then paste out data, but I'm just going to change up the line. The sheet name can stay the same and the file name can stay the same, but this time we can specify that we want to use columns such as A and B. If you run this code cell, you'll see we will only get the first two columns returned. And each time you read the Excel file, it resets the Excel file. So here, we are only getting the first two columns, which are A and B. We can also set if we want a header or not. For example, we could set header to equal none. If you rerun the code cell, you'll see that it implies that we did not have a header in our Excel file. Hence, the header will actually be considered its own row. You can also specify that you want to skip rows. So I'm going to add another argument here, skip rows. If you want to skip a row like one, you can rerun the code cell and that will skip the first row. You'll notice here, because we said header is none, the column names 
become created by default on their own. So the columns are just counted off. We can also set that we want to skip rows and columns. So I'm going to copy my code cell into a new code cell. This time I'm going to say that I want to skip rows and instead of using columns, we can actually set which index column we want, such as zero, and we can run our code cell again. Right, so here you'll notice that we skipped our first row, our header was none, and our index column was the first column. So those are some examples of how you can perform Excel sheet manipulation with Python. Coming up, we're going to take a look at how we can use functions in Python to get Excel sheet information so we can analyze our data. So I'll see you in the next lecture. Previously, we learned Excel sheet manipulation with Python. In this lecture, we're going to learn how to get Excel sheet information with Python. So we're going to continue using our same workbook of multiple sheets.xlsx. Here I'm going to create a data variable again and use read Excel to read our multiple sheets.xlsx. Then we can actually paste the variable name to get the value. So that is what our data frame looks like by default. We can use some functions in Python to get information about our Excel sheet. By default, we get the first sheet returned if we don't specify what sheet we want, which you can see the first sheet corresponds with what we have loaded in. If we use data.head, we can get the first five entries in the data frame. The head function is a built-in function in the pandas data frame type. We can also specify if we want more than five. For example, if we want the first 10 entries, we can pass a 10 to the head function, and that will give us the first 10 rows in the data frame. Similarly, we can call data.tail. This will give us the last five entries in the data frame. And if we want to get more than five, we can pass in how many of the last values do we want to get. The info function will give us a summary of our data frame. So we can use data.info. Again, this is built into the pandas data frame type. We can see the class of the variable, which is data frame. The range index, we have 12 entries. The data columns, we have a total of 19 columns. We have the column number and the column value. And then we have the non-null count for each column. How many entries are there that are not null? As well as the data type for the column. Then we have a list of all the data types and the memory usage that the data frame requires. We can use shape to get the dimensions of our data frame. So we can use data.shape and run the code cell. We get 12 by 9 because we have 12 entries by 19 columns, 12 rows by 19 columns. The X is always listed first, the Y is always listed second. X being horizontally and Y being vertically, rows and columns. The total rows is the data.shape at index 0, and we can paste out the value of rows. The columns is the data.shape at index 1, and we can paste out the columns. We can also look at the data types present in the data frame. For that, we can call data.dtypes, and if we run the code cell, we get each column name as well as its data type. We can also get the names of all of our columns with data.columns. If you run the code cell, you'll get returned a list of all of your column names. You can also view a specific column such as just the ID, and you can run your code cell. This will give you a series listing out the values for just that column. And you can try it with any column like systematic risk, for example. Just pass in the column name as a string. And here, this will give you all the values for that column that are present in the data set. So we have 12 values in the data set, 12 samples, and therefore we have 12 values for each column. So that is how you can get information about an Excel sheet in Python.
Coming up next, we're going to learn how we can build Excel filters in Python. So don't miss the next section. If you liked this video, then go to training.mammothinteractive.com. We have tons more content on blockchain, web development, machine learning, and much more. We also have a membership for just $19 a month where you can get access to our 372 course bundle and counting.